Welcome to video two for this unit on functions and volume. In this video, we're going to focus on representing and interpreting functions. Let's connect equations and graphs of functions. Here is a graph showing Noah's run. The time in seconds since he started running is a function of the distance he has run. The point 18,6 on the graph tells you that the time it takes him to run 18 meters is 6 seconds. The input is 18 and the output is 6. The graph of a function is all the coordinate pairs, input, comma, output, plotted in the coordinate plane. By convention, we always put the input first, which means that the inputs are represented on the horizontal axis and the outputs on the vertical axis. Here is a graph showing the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit in a town as a function of time after 8 p.m. The graph of a function tells us what is happening in the context the function represents. In this example, the temperature starts out at 60 degrees Fahrenheit at 8 p.m. It decreases during the night reaching its lowest point at 8 hours after 8 p.m. or 4 a.m. Then it starts to increase. The point shown tells us that 12 hours after 8 p.m. at 8 a.m., the temperature reaches 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Here is a graph showing Andre's distance as a function of time. For a graph representing a context, it is important to specify the quantities represented on each axis. For example, if this is showing distance from home, then Andre starts at some distance from home, maybe at his friend's house, moves further away, maybe to a park to play, then returns home. If instead the graph is showing distance from school, the story may be Andre starts out at home. moves further away, maybe to a friend's house, stays there for some time, then leaves the friend's house to go to school. Functions are all about getting outputs from inputs. For each way of representing a function, equation, graph, table, or verbal description, we can determine the output for a given input. Let's say we have a function represented by the equation y equals 3x plus 2, where y is the dependent variable, and x is the independent variable. If we wanted to find the output that goes with 2, we can input 2 into the equation for x and find the corresponding value of y. In this case, when x is 2, y is 8, since 3 times 2 plus 2 equals 8. If we had a graph of this function instead, then the coordinates of points on the graph are the input-output pairs. So we would read the y-coordinate of the point on the graph that corresponds to a value of 2 for x. Looking at the graph of this function here, we can see the point 2 comma 8 on it, so the output is 8 when the input is 2.
A table representing this function shows the input-output pairs directly, although only for select inputs. As before with the equation and graph, the table shows that if the input is 2, the output is 8. Thank you for watching video 2 of 5 for this unit on functions and volume.